What is going on YouTube? It's your voice Vanko and today I'm excited because Tri Brigade, now the branded version, got hit on the ban list because unfortunately we lost Verte, which pretty much was the only reason the deck could run. But now we have a really cool new way of playing Tri Brigade. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys a Tri Brigade deck profile. Also, I'm going to be showing you guys a little combo at the end, just because for the rest of this week, we're going to be doing post ban list deck profiles. And it's going to be hard to do a deck profile combo, deck profile combo video for each deck. So what we're going to do is going to be showing you guys a combo at the end of the video, which is going to be really nice. But if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Also, if you guys want to check out any of the other post ban list deck profiles, they should be already up on the channel. But again, like I said, there's going to be new ones still coming. So I hope you guys enjoy. I don't want to keep you guys for too long. So with that, let's get into the video. All right, to start off the deck profile, we are starting off with Triple Rescue Cat, Triple Fractal, Triple Nerval, Triple Kit, Double Keras, and Two Revolt. So this is your Tri Brigade engine. I tried out with Triple Keras. I really like Triple Keras, honestly, but there is times it breaks because it's the only Tri Brigade that doesn't actually do anything on its own. The rest of these do. These go into Al Mirage, of course. This one pitches from hand. So that's why you want to max out on these. But Keras obviously doesn't do anything on its own, so that's why you only want to play the two. And you're only on Two Revolt. I really was a big fan of playing three, but Two Revolts is enough now because going second unfortunately revolt kind of sucks and you don't want to draw into it and it's always going to be searchable off your bear brum because you're always going to be making the bear brum so that's why i like two revolt two revolts perfectly fine if you draw into it it's kind of cool because you can do combo lines without the bear brum but it doesn't matter if you don't draw into it because you're always going to get to it anyway so this is it for the package here i guess rescue cat's not a tri brigade but it might as well be a tri brigade at this point this is the package i wouldn't change this up and i think this is perfect okay so for the hand trap lineup we are playing three ash three crow two Veiler, as well as three Imperm. So I think this is the best hand trap lineup in the format right now. These are the most important hand traps in the format. I'm gonna go through a little bit of why I'm playing these ones specifically, because I think it's very important to know why you're playing specific ones. So first of all, you can see that we're not playing Bell, and essentially we're playing Crow instead of the Bell. That's really important because one, Crow is a winged beast for you. That's really good for Keras. It's also just material for you in the graveyard if you need it. But on top of that, DD Crow is just really, really good into every deck this format. Also though, Branded Despia does like to play Branded Lost. And the problem with that is it makes your bells in your hand not live if they set that up before they start to the combo. So because of that reason, DD Crow is really good. Now DD Crow also, you guys have to keep in mind that if they go Branded in red, you can DD Crow the target so the red doesn't resolve. If you play against any Brave decks, you can banish the Water Enchantress before they can get the right to their hand. If you're playing against any of those Therion decks and you see that they're setting up for the Therion Special Summon, what you can do is you can DD Crow the material before they activate the Therion in hand. And this way they can't actually special summon the Therion monster. So DD Crow is just really good into a lot of different matchups and it's really, really powerful for you in that sense. And then the rest of them, you know Sword Soul and Despia are probably going to be the two best decks of the format. So Veiler and Imperm are insanely good against Sword Soul. If they can't get their effects off their normal summons, then they're going to have a really hard time playing through these kind of hand traps. So that's why you're playing these five. And then Ash, of course, is just generically just one of the best hand traps in the game. But also right now, it's really good specifically because it stops stuff like Brand Infusion, which is very important. These, I think, are just really the best hand traps of the format. Yes, Ghost Bell is really good. But again, like I said, Ghost Bell it doesn't do enough, I think, against Sword Soul. And then also even against the Branded Despia, where it should be a good card. If they set up Branded Lost, then it doesn't really matter because you can't even activate that card. So I think these ones specifically are just the best ones in the format. And also they synergize the best with Tri Brigade. And now for one of the spiciest techs of this deck, this is two Wandering Griffin Riders. So if you guys watch my Tri Brigade branded profile or any of my previous branded profiles, I did say that I had a really spicy card that I really didn't want to show off, but uh, I'm going to be showing it off to you guys today. And that's Wandering Griffin Rider. There's actually a really big reason as to why I'm playing two of these. Now, big shout out to my boy Alpha for actually giving me this idea because this is 100% completely his idea. I'm going to give you guys a couple of reasons why this is so insane. And I know anyone watching this video has probably never seen this and is probably going to be calling me crazy. But trust me, this card is insane. So one thing, it's a wing beast for you, right? So at worst case, you can pitch it for Keras, right? But the really cool thing about this card is that it's an extender for you outside of Keras, which this deck really lacks, right? So if you open your first five cards and you have like, let's say a rescue cat and a griffin rider, but let's say you don't have a cross out or a call by the grave in your hand and you're scared your cat is going to get hit with an imp perm, a veiler, whatnot, that's fine. You can start your turn off by summoning the Griffin Rider. Of course, you have no cards on your side of the field. You can summon this, you can summon your cat. Now, if your cat doesn't go off, it gets hit by a hand trap. You just use your cat and your Griffin Rider to make your first link two, and then you can keep going from there. So this is a really good extender for you. Now, another thing and another reason why this card is really good is it's also really good going second. It's a free special summon for you, but it's also really good into the fun matchup. As we guys saw post ban list, that deck didn't get hit at all. They still have barrier statue. And this is the only way for you essentially to out the barrier statue because it special summons itself to your side of the 
the field. Now you could argue, oh, but you can just normal summon a fractal and then go into your battle phase. Okay, well, that's true. But at that point, your opponent might have an answer for that. This also just gives you the extra body that you can special summon where now you threaten the battle phase and they have to get rid of this or they have to stop this before you start all your other combos. So that's why this card's insane. There's so many other reasons. Like this card is insanely powerful in this deck. And I know people are not on it and I know it's only me, but really when Alpha gave me this idea and when I was playing this before, this card single-handedly won me games where you don't have cards to stop your opponent from like hand trapping you. So this card itself is just insanely powerful. I know I went on a little bit of a rant just for this card, but this card's insane. And I think like if people are still going to be on try, you really have to play this card. It's just so good. And then we're going to end it off with the zoo package. So we're playing one whip tail, one wrap here, as well as one ram ram. This package is really good, especially with tanky back at two. Now you don't want to always use your normal summon on these, of course, without barrage, it makes it a little bit harder to play these cards, but these cards are still really good because fairy G funny enough can summon your zoo monsters from your hand. So because fairy G can summon them, it gives you access to something like Zeus, which you didn't have really access to before. So that's why you're playing these. And then for the last monster in the deck, we are playing one, the fable, Cereboral. I don't know how to say this name, but you're playing one of this. And the reason why you're playing one of these is because it actually gives you a combo line, which I'm going to show you guys at the end of the video how to combo with this deck. But it gives you a combo line where you end on your Herald of the Arclight. It's also a beast. And if this card is discarded, it gets to special summon itself back to the side of the field. So what that's really good for is because if you pitch it off the Keras, it summons itself back. If you pitch it off the Bear Brum, it summons itself back. So this card is really, really powerful because it gives you another extender in the deck. And really the biggest problem with this deck is that it doesn't have extenders or it didn't have extenders. The branded engine was the best extending engine for the deck but of course now without verte you can't really play that engine anymore so this kind of replaces it and it's very powerful in its own and then one more thing just before we get rid of these cards over here one more thing about griffin that is really really good is it's actually also a cross out target funny enough if you end up playing into any of the brave matchups you can just cross out a griffin and they don't get the omni negate this card is insane. Like you guys have to be playing this card. And then to round it off for the spell cards, uh, we're playing two tanky. Of course, tanky is just newly back at two. You have to be playing two tanky. Three cross out, one call by the grave, as well as one foolish burial. This is pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I have to explain this too much. The second tanky is kind of nice because you get to play the zoo package. You get Zeus access now, which is really nice. You can't not play these. You got to be playing these. And one thing I do want to say is I actually cut TTT out of the deck. I actually don't think TTT is that good this format. There's not a lot of decks. If you think about Sword Soul and you think about Despia, which are probably going to be the two best decks, they're not really playing hand traps. So TTT is a very situational card that won't really come up. And the weird thing about TTT is that it makes good hands really good, but it makes bad hands even worse because it in itself doesn't do anything for you. So that's why I cut that out of the deck completely. We're just playing these and this is 40 on the dot. And then to get into the extra deck over here, we are playing two Shureg, two Fairy and one Bear Brum. We actually cut Rugal completely out. And I actually really liked the Rugal and it was hard to cut that card out, but we needed the one more space specifically for that Fabled tech that I showed you. And I'll show you guys the combo at the end of the video, of course. But yeah, that's why we cut the Rugal. So I think this is fine. The Rugal never really came up because the only time you're ever making a Link 3 is when you're going to access code to OTK anyways. So you only really need one in your deck and I'll show you that in a bit. Then we're playing one Double Dragon Lords. The standard combo is pretty much Apollo, Double Dragon Lords, as well as Hera of the arc light so uh you need to be playing one of this one all mirage for those weird hands where you have to normal summon a nerval and whatnot one doom eagle this is the link three that i was talking about this is the only time you're ever going to make it you're going to make this and you're going to go straight into access code to go for otk so you never really need the second link three one apollo of course for your combo one herald of course for your combo then you're playing the little zoo package one tiger one borbro as well as one chaka nine and then ending it off with one zeus the tanky coming back to two made this engine kind of live and yes it sucks that it takes up four spots but it's just too powerful especially in bad hands or when your opponent opens multiple hand traps or multiple ways to stop your boards ending on a zeus with like two materials even sometimes four materials is insanely powerful because a lot of decks can't play through a zeus so uh yeah th this is really powerful i really like this package and i'm happy that it's back in the deck Okay, so to get into the combo here, this is going to be like the best combo in the deck and one of the strongest combos in the deck. All you need is a Rescue Cat and any Tri Brigade name. So it doesn't have to be Fractal. It could be any Tri Brigade name. It could also technically be the Fabled card itself because instead of searching the Fabled, which you guys will see in the combo, you can search the other Tri name that you need. But any Tri name essentially and the Rescue Cat is the full combo. The other three cards don't matter. So what you're going to do is you're going to start off by normal summoning your Rescue Cat. You're going to activate your Rescue Cat effect to summon two cards from your deck. And the two you're going to be summoning are of course your Kit as well as your Kara. So you're going to be summoning these two. You could also go double kit. It doesn't really matter. It depends on what's in your hand. Then you can link these two away to make your Fear Jeet. So then once you have Fair G on the board, Kit is going to trigger in the graveyard and Kit is going to send you your Nerval. And then Nerval is going to get to search you 
your missing piece here. So here in this case, we're going to search the Keras because we didn't open the Keras. If you open the Keras, you search a frac or you search any of the other ones. So keep that in mind, no matter what you're missing, you're going to be able to search it with this deck, right? You're going to use the fair Jade effect to summon the tri beast that you have in your hand. Then you're going to use that one to banish the four cards in your graveyard. Now, so you're going to banish four to summon your omen from your extra deck. You're going to link these two away. So now these two are going to be in your graveyard and you're going to go into your bear Brum. Omen is going to get to trigger its effect now here because you have four banished. You can search another card or another wing beast, beast or beast warrior. And here is where you're going to search your fabled and then here is where you're going to search your fabled monster again i can't say this name i'm sorry for that but yeah you're going to search your fabled monster here then what you're going to do is you're going to activate your keras pitching the fabled monster to special summon the keras the fabled monster is going to bring itself back out i find it so funny that i keep saying fabled monster but yeah you're going to be summoning this back out off of its own effect of course at this point you still have three cards in your hand by the way right then you're going to use the keras effect on your side of the field to banish the other two cards in your graveyard to summon your double dragon lords so now what you're doing is you're setting up your board of double dragon lords which is a bounce for you then what you're going to do is you're going to use your fabled monster as well as your Keras. you're going to sync these two away so you're going to synchro summon here and summon your herald of the arc light now one really cool thing about this deck is it really had trouble putting up negates on the board outside of apollo but the herald of the arc light is now going to give you another option for a negate here then what you're going to do is you're going to go bear brum as well as your fair jeet to summon your apollo so now you have an apollo with two materials you have your double dragon lords as well as your arc light here's where it's really important these other three cards could be literally anything if they're cards that you feel is a brick in your hand you can activate the fear g essentially to start to fix your hand but in this case let's just pretend like our hand is okay we're just going to activate the bear brum here to search our revolt okay so but again if your hand kind of sucks or you have something that you'd rather put back into your deck you can activate the fear g as well to kind of fix your hand in that sense and then you're going to put one of the cards from your hand back to the bottom of your deck doesn't really matter what it is and then you're going to set your revolt so your end board here is going to be apollo with two negates double dragon lords with a bounce arc light with a negate and nothing can be sent from the hand or deck to to the graveyard so it's very anti-meta in a sense where a lot of decks can't actually play through this and then it also is an extra negate for you and then you have the revolt as well that you can make your omen with or your second omen and then you can have another form of disruption there so you have one two three four five disruptions with this board and this is just f any cat and tri brigade monster so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy now i do want to say that ending on boards of apollo double dragon lords as well as a herald is very 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 powerful and the reason for that is essentially because a lot of decks can't play through that and you're not prone to getting super polyed unless someone's randomly playing mud dragon which a lot of people are not really playing mud dragon so apollo double dragon lord should be safe in that sense but regardless i think this deck is super super powerful very very consistent and it can keep up and compete with today's meta game so if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to like and subscribe if you did i don't want to keep you guys for any longer thank you all for watching and with that spanko sign and out peace